The EU AI Act just became real and the way you deliver AI is about to get a whole lot more serious. It became law back in June 2024, but here's what most teams don't realize. The real enforcement, including penalties, kicks in on the 2nd of August 2025, which actually means that delivery teams have a short window to know what their responsibilities are and how to fill, fulfill them. And with penalties of up to $35 million or 7% of revenue, whichever is greater, this is something that all of us building or deploying AI need to know about. Hey friends, I'm Ahmed, an AI and data transformation lead based in the UK. I help non-AI native organizations with AI and data delivery. In this week's AI news for delivery professionals, we're covering what the EU AI Act really says, how it's going to affect day-to-day -day AI delivery. I mean, did you know that in the EU you have 50 human rights spanning six different categories? We're going to cover more on that and what it means for the EU AI Act as well. But how do you do all of that without killing your innovation? So at the end, I have a quick bonus where we're going to cover three really simple but important tips to help you to stay compliant and without killing your innovation. So buckle in and let's get started. Also, if you're part of an AI delivery team, please share this with your teammates so that you're all familiar with what's going on and are clear on what changes you all need to make. Okay, so let's have a look now at what the EU AI Act and what has happened so far. Right, on the 12th of July 2024, the formal notification of the EU Act took place. Fast forward a few months, 2nd of February 2025, they've already banned unacceptable risk systems. We're going to talk more about that in a few minutes. Now, as I've already said, on the 2nd of August, enforcement of this act, including penalties, begins so there isn't a lot of time. This means that the delivery teams must know their responsibilities and how to fulfill them. Now, over the next few weeks, before the deadline, I'm putting together a three-part mini tutorial series, which is going to cover everything you need to know, so be sure not to miss that. If you're not already subscribed, please do so, so that you automatically get notified when I release it. But let's now turn to the Act itself and what it actually says. Well, the purpose of the Act is to stimulate innovation with AI, but, and crucially, whilst protecting people's health, safety and fundamental rights. But if we're creating rules for AI, we must first agree on what the definition of an artificial intelligence system is, which is defined by the Act, and you can see that on the screen. But rather than reading through all of it, I want to bring your attention to two words. One, adaptiveness after deployment, and the other is infers from the input it receives. And this well, when we bring the whole definition together, casts a very wide net, both on tradi traditional machine learning algorithms and more modern incarnations of that. So, now we know what the definition of AI is, the question then becomes, is who does this apply to? Well, first of all, if you're selling any AI products in the EU and you are based in the EU, this applies to you. But equally, even if you're not based in the EU and you're selling to the EU, this act also applies to you. So that's a very crucial point. The other thing is there are four key roles that have been identified. One is the provider. Now, these are the people that develop or brands an AI system for the EU market. Say, for example, a startup building a fraud detection model and offering it to EU banks, for example. The next role is a deployer. This is somebody that uses AI in a professional setting. So, for example, a hospital using a diagnostic AI tool for radiology could be an example of that. The third category is importer. This is bringing, a, a, bringing in non-EU AI system into the EU. So, for example, if a French tech firm is importing a US speech recognition system, then that could be an example of this. And a distributor. Uh, that is somebody that makes AI available in the EU, even though the original developer may reside anywhere in the world. So a software reseller, as an example. 
All right, there are four different categories under which all AI systems fall. Let's start off with the first one. So level one is minimal risk, everyday AI with no significant risk. Most AI solution systems kind of fall over here. So these are like your spam filters, AI in video games, maybe your recommendations for your videos or your music, just stuff like that. So no regulatory requirements are required for this. Next level up is level two, what's called limited risk. These have a limited impact on your rights and your safety, but still require some transparency. So we need to inform the users that they're using AI and that these, the results are generated artificially. So example of that could be chatbots, deep fakes, and virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa. Now, it's okay to put together a deep fake, but we do need to make sure we outline to the users that this actually is in fact a deep fake. Next, we go to level three. This is the high risk, and this is where it affects people's lives in critical domains like health, education, employment, and safety. So over here, we've got very strict obligations with, reg with relating to risk management, conformity, and logging and human oversight, et cetera, et cetera. And examples of these are credit scoring algorithms, hiring algorithms, medical diagnostic systems, law enforcement tools, et cetera. And finally, level four, we've got unacceptable risk. And this is where AI systems pose a clear threat to people's rights, safety, or democracy. And these are banned entirely. So examples of this could be social scoring by governments, uh, real-time biometric surveillance in public, and predictive policing based on profiling. So these are completely banned and have already been banned since February 2025. Okay, so now let's move over to the health, safety and fundamental rights. Did you know in the European Union you have a list of 50 fundamental rights that cannot be violated by governments, companies and other individuals? These fall under six categories, dignity, freedom, equality, solidarity, citizens' rights, and justice. So examples of this could be like a right to fair trial, non-discrimination, right to human dignity, privacy, fundamental rights that we all take for granted, such as who you want to marry. All these fundamental rights must be taken into consideration by the AI so that these are not violated in any way. But is the act any good? Well, let's consider the benefits versus the cons. Well, obviously, Hopefully, this is going to help us to keep safe and is going to help to protect our fundamental rights and also provide a minimal kind of standard that everybody adheres to. On the con side of things, it could be argued that this, this could be stifling our innovation. I mean, the US has a major advantage over EU then because it's got less red tape that it needs to go through. And then also there's a cost of this regulation. You know, the estimates range from 1% to 2.7% of revenue, which is a huge amount and may give bigger players a huge advantage over smaller players. So is this a good idea or is this stifling innovation? Please let me know your thoughts and let's discuss this in the comments below. But now what I want to do is I want to discuss how is this going to affect our day-to-day -day AI delivery. As you know, when we look at all news, we look across eight different categories and I select the top three categories that I think are most impacted by this particular news. And in this case, I've selected the three areas in red that you can see on the screen that are most impacted. The first one is the governance. And the important thing over here is we cannot think of this as a separate function anymore. We need to now start to bring that into the delivery process. That means our delivery approach is going to be significantly different. That's also why it's in red. And now the EU AI Act makes data a regulated asset that has significant implications as well. So let's start off with the impact number one. The first thing is we need to make sure we're really clear on the use case risk classification. We've now got the four classifications that I've already called out before. We need to make sure that based upon that, we have an appropriate response as far as governance, risk and regulatory compliance is concerned. The second, we need to make sure we've got compliance artifact and these I'm going to be spending more time discover, discussing when we're looking at the next stage. But teams really need to generate and maintain documentation showing how they are complying with their legal obligations. 
And then finally, we've got pre-deployment reviews. So we need to build assessment gates into the delivery pipeline, no go live without legal clearance and required compliance checks. Number two, moving on to delivery approach, we need to make sure that we've got delivery checkpoints in place and so that we are compliant and we've got reviews that are built into the sprint cycle. Next, we need to make sure we've got integrated risk management. So we have embedded risk reviews, mitigation steps in planning, development, and testing. And finally, our documentation, technical documentation must be created during the development and not retrofitted afterwards. There's actual specific parts of the article, Article 11, if you're interested to go and have a look at that, that call this out. Moving on to the impact number three, this is the data readiness and management, argue, arguably the most, the most challenging of the three areas to implement. We now need to track where the data comes from, assess it for buyers, lock it down, who can access it and why as well. So quite a lot of stuff that we need to make sure that we have our focus on. But the question then becomes is how can we stay compliant without killing our innovation? And so here are three quick tips to help you to do that. So the first thing is, is smart scoping. Classify early and build it in intelligently. So we need to classify AI use cases early on. Is it high? Is it limited? Is it minimal? Uh, and we then tailor our delivery to match that risk. If it's a low risk, we keep it low, uh, we keep it lightweight. And obviously if it's high risk, we need to have governance built in from the day one. Second, we want to build the documentation into the agile artifacts. So don't think of this as a kind of traditional uh, compliance document. Think of your entire delivery process from all of the artifacts that you have as going to support that evidence that you ha are compliant. Okay, so that will require a degree of rigor and discipline to make sure you've got all of that stuff. But we're not building things at the end, we're building it throughout our delivery cycle. Okay, and then lastly, embedding legal and ethics into the delivery process. Don't think of them as an end stage compliance. Bring them in, include them in your backlog requirements, your planning, your sprints, your governance check-in points. Okay, so quick summary wrap up. So EU AI Act is part of law and we really have th these rules are now starting to get enforced from the 2nd of August, so we really need to get started. The key takeaway I would say is the smart teams won't wait. Build these changes into your operational rhythm now if you've not done so already. And it really compliance is for all of us, right? I mean, none of us wanna be on the wrong end of a runaway AI, whether that's for our self-driving car, mortgage application, a legal challenge or medical diagnosis. So this is in all of our interest that we act really responsibly when we're building these applications. And finally, um, I'll be covering these in my upcoming three-part lesson series. So ensure you've subscribed to get those. Next week, we're pulling back the curtain on Shadow AI. I know you've all heard of Shadow IT. Yes, indeed, Shadow AI, the unsanctioned tools already running in your organization. With over 80% of enterprising reporting AI misuse. I was shocked when I heard that. From hallucinations to hidden data leaks, I'll show you what it's costing you. Unpack this simply and clearly. So I'll see you next week. Take care. Goodbye.